Let's do it. Welcome to another episode of Trading WTF. In this episode, we have Paul Scott joining us. Uh, he's a Forex trading consultant and educator with over 25 years of experience uh, trading institutional, professional levels, and uh, all over the place. Today, we'll be primarily talking about what uh, retail traders are missing out on in their education, what they can learn from the institutional sector, and what they should uh, concentrate on in their learning and trading. A little bit more about Paul. Uh, Paul started work on the London Metal Exchange in 1994 for Credit Lyonnais Rus as uh, floor clerk, moved on to Suckton, UK, now Suckton Financial, um, passed all the exams, got licensed, and he became on a client advisor uh, with uh, telling the how to trade and uh, advising other clients. He moved on, to de- he moved desk to Suckton to then broker and trade base metals, precious metals, FX, oil, and some soft commodities, then moved to various other banks and brokers after leaving Suckton. He left the city in 2009, did some consulting for a tr- trade routing system for the uh, LME desks at various banks for a company called Bank Tech. When finished up, he helped a friend set up educational company and then decided to teach retail traders what he was taught and knew about how the markets work. Coming from the inside of the business. Thanks for joining us, Paul. No problem at all, Michael. Thanks very much for having us on. Um, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. Um, yeah. Hopefully we'll have a little bit of fun um, this afternoon, where it is for me. Um, shoot, what do you want to speak about? Oh, well, you know, uh, a couple of weeks ago we were talking, you're like, you sure you want me to come on your show, Michael? He's like, uh, I've been on another uh, person's show and, you know, uh, they, they had a trading education firm and, you know, my angle was totally different from theirs. And, uh, well, I have no angle. The angle here is to uncover every angle that's out there and see what, what, what the views are out there and see all the views that are out there. So yeah. <laughs> give, give us a little rundown about, about your views, Paul, and, you know, what we can expect. Well, I mean, you have to look at the retail trading sort of arena as as, as backwards in comparison to what happens at institutional level. Um, everything is based around time, multiple time frames. Everything is based around chart patterns, trend lines, indicators, all of this stuff, uh, which is all fine and very well. But, you know, look, that's a tool for analysts. Analysts at banks produce reports. They get sent out to clients. They're always looking at the past. They're not predicting the future. Um, I think one of the big things is is, is everybody's really hit up about time. You should look at it as, as, as something that's linear. It just, it just happens. Events happen. Um, you know, you can have wars. You can have, you know, different presidents, different prime ministers. You can have different central bank monetary policy. You can have different rates of inflation, different, you know, uh, central bank interest rates, so many different things. And it's just all constantly happening and trying to break that down into maybe a five minute or a 15 minute snapshot. It's kind of pointless because uh, the world doesn't work like that, you know. Um, so there are various factors. I mean, if you looked at it from what I know, I mean, correct me, I could be wrong. But, you know, if you look at retail education, it's all based around technical analysis, uh, which only tells you what's happened in the past. It's not going to, you know, can't predict fundamentals with technical analysis it's all fine and well if you can tell me that head and shoulders has completed on a, any chart fantastic but sorry the horse has already bolted you know, there's nothing you can really do about it you could tell me when it's going to start no could you tell me when it's going to finish no you can only tell me once it's completed pointless you know markets move on the basis of fundamental on the basis of fundamentals uh, fundamentals are ever changing so i mean if you looked at world in which we live in at the moment uh you know cpi figures cpi figures came out of the, the states this week market you know market moving really big market moves from there um you can't predict that with a bloody bollinger band or a fibonacci level or you know some crazy chart pattern it just doesn't work like that um so 90 percent technical 10 percent fundamental for the retail no swap that around 10% technical, 90% fundamental. Then you're going to understand why. Okay, so why are these markets moving? Uh, markets are moving at the moment on the basis of, like I say, something like a CPI figure, which if you went back a couple of years ago, didn't hold as much sway as it's holding these days. So, like I say, you know, as I've said to people in the past, um, you know, teaching them, 
you know, it's an ongoing process. It's not just a case of A plus B equals C. It's a case of, look, you've got to keep working at this. You know, the world changes, things become significant, things become insignificant. You know, back during the COVID crisis, you know, it was a race to the bottom for interest rates. Um, now it's a race to the top because inflation's got out of hand. Like I say, these CPI figures that perhaps two years ago really didn't matter that much, are having a huge impact upon the market. So, you know, it's a case of, it's like kind of like take what you think, you know, and reverse it. You know, those technical analysis tools, like I say, all great and fine if you're an, actually an analyst at a bank that's producing reports. That's all good. But you're here to be a trader. You're not here to be an analyst, are you, at the end of the day? So, um, yeah, I'm sure we'll touch upon, you know, sort of things as, as, as we go through here. But, yeah, just to say, if you Google Forex trading courses, this, that and the other, and basically, I've been given the OK to use language, uh, basically, it's a pile of shit. Um, you know, stop using it. Uh, it's not designed to make you money. It's designed to make you broker money um, at the end of the day. Um, you know, if you log on to various um, brokerage houses, ah, they have an educational section. Let's be perfectly honest. They ain't going to teach you how to take their money, are they? They're going to teach you how to lose. It's in their interest. So, you know, if you, again, sometimes take a step back, think about what, you know, who's making money here, then you sort of might start to unravel some things and think, hmm, actually, maybe I shouldn't be even contemplating looking at all of this technical analysis stuff. Like I say, great if you want to be an analyst. If that's your goal, fantastic. You want to be a trader, forget it. I beg to differ about, you know, brokers wanting you to lose money, but I feel like, Paul, you're going to get me into like a, a, a another friggin' side down the thing. And we, and we can definitely talk about brokers down the line if you want it. If you want it. I know, I, I know you're trying to poke me, but we'll, we, can, we can go there. If you want. <laughs> well, there's a reason, you know, when you log on and obviously, you know, you log on to a brokerage browser's website, it's 78% of people lose money. Yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah. Why? Education. If you don't know the rules of the game, why are you even playing? You know, I mean, look, your brokerage house. Hey, look, that's fine. Not necessarily directing it at yourself. But you know, let's 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 just think about it. If there's a lot of people are losing money, why is it because they're very well educated and they're, you know, silly when it comes to trading? Is it that the education that they've received isn't actually any good and it's not designed to work? And you know, again, just take a step back. Think about who's making money. Well, I agree. I agree. Well, who's making money? But we, well, let's focus on the education guys. Like the the broker side, they're sophisticated. They can they have all all sorts of things. But I, I definitely I definitely agree. It, on the retail side, it is predatory to the max anywhere you look, and. I'm not going to argue that or dispute that any which way of the thing. Uh, and but let's go into education. Let's go into education and making sure that that we get it the right that we get it the right way, yeah. and 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 give people another angle and uh, an understanding of how and how it works. And I guess how does technical analysis lead people wrong? How and, and let's maybe like go into go into how how we see people going astray with technical analysis and how we can go right, how we can go the right way with you know building the right picture and and understanding fundamental of what's going on in the world, in the world and how to apply that well sure i mean if, you know there's so many different fundamental analysis tools out there um i mean i often ask people you know can you name me one rsi great what is it relative strength index fantastic what's it measure i don't know Okay, fair enough. What set uh, the path? The past over this. So, so move this much over that much over this much. The average of that movement over this many days, plus minus, divided by, subtract this. So it's, it's, over, it's, it's, it's overbought. It's oversold. Right. Are it's you pretty much? Put, pretty much, you're just like doing like um, that. All the math is telling you is the price was in this range, this num, this this number range within this time. That's all it's telling you. Right, that's all it's telling it. Now, the other thing is, is what setting should it be on? 
right? Because there's obviously a myriad of settings that you can have it on. So if you then think about it and you say, right, well, I, I can name it, but I don't know what it does and I don't know what settings it should be on, why the hell am I using it? You know, and this is the thing as well. If we understand and, you know, markets, for me, markets do not trend. Markets are in ranges, right? Predefined ranges that have been visited time and time and time and time again by the institutions. So the thing is, if you had something like an RSI and it's like, it's overbought, it's overbought, it's overbought. Well, that's rubbish because the fundamentals have said, right, okay, if the previous value of this particular level was expensive, and the previous times, you know, let's say the previous three or four times we'd got there, it had been sold off. Now, if something's changed fundamentally, and now the value of that particular range, so let's just say you have cheap at the bottom and expensive at the top. So if it's now something's changed fundamentally, we go through a range, close above a range. Now, what was expensive is now deemed to be cheap. And then we have the upper range as well, which you would deem to be expensive. See, now, if something's changed value, per se, your RSI is saying it's overbought, it's overbought, it's overbought. No, it's not. It's not overbought at all. You're expecting, oh, right, the market should be coming down. Why? On the basis of an RSI or something like that. And that's not what happens. So fundamentals, like I say, hugely come into trading, you know, values of things. You know, what value have institutions placed upon a particular level? What value have institutions placed upon you know, a particular currency, one versus the other? So, I mean, you know, if we're looking at the moment, um, you've got diverging monetary policies between the United States and Japan. So the Bank of Japan has basically said, right, well, we're not going to be putting up our interest rates. Uh, inflation isn't running as rampant as it is around the world. Um, and actually, at the moment, on the basis of there's lots of, you know, bottlenecks in supply of, of things, you know, materials and stuff like that. It's not actually doing us much harm in having a weak yen because our goods are now cheaper on the world stage, which means that more people would like to buy them. Um, so you have this, like I say, this diverging monetary policy. If you, if, if people are of a certain age um, or are, history buffs or whatever. Um, if we went back to the mid 80s, there was a thing called the Plaza Accord. Now the Plaza Accord uh, was huge, it was absolutely massive. The US is uh, experiences in the early 80s, a huge, huge, huge upswing in the value of the dollar um, to the point where it got so ridiculously expensive, they couldn't export companies were losing money because they couldn't export because the value of the dollar was so high that it made the cost of products abroad ridiculously expensive for other countries to buy them consumers to buy them. and so they wanted to realign the exchange rate system and that basically meant that the central banks of the top five or the g5 nations i should say as it was then known so the united states west germany france uh, the uk and japan they all agreed to essentially manipulate currency rates over a two-year period so the japanese then were it's like a, it was like an explosion of in, in electronics you know if, if you're of a certain age you know every single thing that you bought was made in japan if you were buying TVs, if you were buying telephones, if you were buying VCRs, since DVDs hadn't been invented, um, you know, all things like that. It was Walkman, Walkman. Walkman, yeah, exactly, right? Mm -hmm. So all of these things are really kind of cheap, uh, which obviously helps to really sort of kickstart and, you know, give the Japanese economy sort of a real sort of boom period. So if you looked prior to the Plaza Accords, uh, the, the value of the yen, let's call it rough value of the yen, was 242 yen to the dollar, right, which makes your goods really exportable. The Americans, on the other hand, you're trying to sell goods and the value of your currency is ridiculously high. When you try to sell them, nobody wants to buy them because they're just too expensive. And so what they did was, it, it was monumental, they got together, they decided, right, we have to devalue the dollar. So if you then go and look in 1988, the yen was actually around about 120. 
So you've gone in this very short period of time, Japanese goods being really, really cheap, everybody wants to buy them, so wait, hold on a minute. Um, now they're kind of expensive and they devalued the dollar. So if you go back, have a look, type in Google, whatever search engine you use, 50 year uh, pound dollar chart, 50 year dollar yen chart, you'll go back and see it and they're monumental moves. Now, could we be having something like that today? The dollar again is ridiculously strong um, on the world stage, as you've been seeing. Obviously, you've been following the markets. The yen got up to just shy of 145, the lowest it's been in a heck of a long time. Uh, the pound has got down to 35 year lows. Uh, the euro, again, really kind of weak. And again, you have to look at it and say, right, so Fed's monetary policy is what? They're trying to curb inflation, but they're putting interest rates up and up and up and up. The dollar is again hugely, hugely strong. So if you think about it, it can't just be one way traffic. You know, it, it's going to have to get to a point where it, the dollar has to come down in value. So again, but these are fundamentals. Tell, tell me which technical analysis tool can predict any of that. Over to you. No, that's an idea that you're, yeah. Hey, if someone had monthly bars or something like that, maybe I'm making the argument for them. But yeah, I agree. I agree. The over, yeah, I, you're like, it goes way too up. You're like, oh, but you can never predict a high. You can never predict a low. No, so but what, what you can do is, is you can understand, like I said, ranges. Regi and, and regime changes as well. Like, well, for you, what you were talking about is regime change. They have yeah. to change. The, that was essentially, they changed the, the way that either the, political system work, the economic system work, however it is, they, they made some major changes of how everything's going to work. Yeah. And so then, like I say, you can't use technical analysis to predict that. The, you know, you have to build up a fundamental picture. You have to understand, you know, sort of how things are intertwined in markets, um, you know, how central bank monetary policy affects the value of currencies, interest rates, inflation. You know, it's 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 got bugger all to do with bloody technical analysis and you know, let me buy this robot for seventy nine bucks and it's gonna make you a millionaire. Really? You know, don't you think the likes of Goldman might have snapped it up and you know I mean one thing that annoys the shit out of me really is the the rag to riches stories that you see all over Instagram and here, there and everywhere and it's like, you know, I put a hundred bucks into my account and you know, I'd made it turn it into a thousand in by the end of the week, and then you know, and now look at me. Really? Seriously? Yeah. It's, it's just, just rubbish. You um, could be me. You could be me. You just could, pay me. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Pay me. You know, you could be me, and you know, you ask them a question. I suppose you could ask them any question about fundamentals. No. They're good. They're good politicians, though. The, they they answer every every question with no answer. Yeah. Just yeah. Yeah. Just buy my software or do this and do that and everything will be rosy and you know, it will be millionaires. Rubbish. Yeah. Yeah. Absolute rubbish. Um, yeah. But yes, I mean, like I say, if you, you 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 know, when you're learning to trade, fundamentals are the thing. But just realise that they change. So you have to change. You have to adapt to different market conditions. Um, well, yeah. like I, I'm definitely thinking things are going to change, like o over the long term. Like I've, yeah, uh, we, we can get into politics and stuff like that, but like it, it, I think politics are are definitely affecting where things are going. Uh, like the whole climate uh, type of wave and the whole war with ukraine to justify inflation which was really a cause of all that money that was printed but you can't no one wants to have to blame the government right now because hey maybe elections are around the corner and well you can't we, we printed money to save you we printed money to save hey i didn't want that money printed i didn't need that money printed didn't no. i didn't vote for that money to be printed and we're all sending, you know, all these countries are sending money over to Ukraine. You know, here, I'll take this, take this, take this, take this. <sighs> Not being funny, but, you know, if you're, I mean, for me, it just, God, God, it could be just because I'm, you know, getting on and, you know, I'm more grumpy as you get older. But I mean, you know, if you've got the president of Ukraine, 
down with his missus, um, having a picture taken for Vogue. What, in the middle of a war? Uh, uh, well, if you live in the G7, don't read this book because it'll make you grumpy. Er. <laughs> and he's like, he's... And he pretty much says in the, in the book, he says in the book, he says, the G7 nations got rich off of cheap products and cheap uh, energy, and that's going to change. What's, what's happened? What's happened? Our products are getting more expensive. Our energy is getting more expensive. He's like, we're moving around too much. You have to move around less. Our energy is getting super, our gas is super expensive. Can't go anywhere. Yep. So like, so this is going to be my uh, fundamental playbook moving forward. I got to give this another read over the next uh, few weeks and uh, and get and get that figured out. But speaking of fundamentals, like that's going to be the playbook. So understanding, I, 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 I think over the long term, U.S. could be much stronger than the British pound. Oh, uh, oh that's the thing. You have, the thing is as well. You have to look at it and just say, right, you know, fundamentally. Are there any great? Is there any great news coming out of the UK right now? No. Is there any great news coming out of Europe right now? No. no. You know, it, and you have to look at it, and it's, it's just what made me laugh the other day. Uh, I, was, I was talking to somebody of teaching going to a recession, and it was permanently on his screen, and it said the pound is at 35-year lows against the dollar. I said, "What's your immediate reaction to that?" He said, "Well, it's a buy, isn't it?" Why? Oh, because it hasn't been this low in 35 years, right? Fundamentally, the dollar is extremely strong. There's nothing great coming out of the UK. Why is that a buy? Oh, because we haven't been down to these levels for years and years. Doesn't mean you're not going to go any further down. The fundamental picture hasn't changed. You know, it, it, it's, I don't know. But I mean, are these things put there to distract you? Yeah, probably. Probably down on campus. Yeah. I think it's going further down. I think like if if the if the British pound was three fifty to like the U.S. dollar, or the Canadian dollar back in the day, like it, the U.S. dollar, why can't it be you know two dollars to a British pound or two dollars to a euro? There's nothing to say that that won't happen. But again, you know, it's like I think sometimes as well. You, sometimes you can have a great trade idea, but it might be at the wrong time. You know, uh, yeah. you know, it's, a, it's again, it's sometimes, you, you know, you have to perhaps wear a bit of pain because you might have got that trade right, but you might have got in it at the wrong time. Um, Tell so, me about it, man. I'm living that. I'm living that right now. I've called the, the shorts on a few things and just, you know, a death by a thousand cuts, putting my entry, putting my stop losses and they're just wanting to have the perfect thing and not. And just you know, if I did it right, I would have just taken less, taken less of a trade size and had a bigger, you know, a bigger range to play off of, and then I would have hit. I don't know, like. Yeah, again, that's the thing, isn't it? It's 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 position trading. So yeah. I mean, the thing is, is not to go not to go all in. First, you know, first trade. Don't go all in because you know, like I say, if you get you've got. Yo, bro, I'm watching Wall Street bets on my phone, man. I'm a degen, all right? No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> but no, I mean, the, the, the thing is, is uh, again, it's it, 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 how do you suffer with loss? You know, when you've got a trade going against you, how do you suffer with loss? And if you're, if you're a, a typical retail trader, and I'm not having a dig here by any stretch of the imagination, but the thing is with loss is it's one of those emotions that we don't, generally know how to deal with very well um because you know i'd suggest possibly dealing with a you know a loss of a loved one or a pet or something like that that's the only time that we kind of really feel it and then we have to deal with it and it's not an emotion that we're normally having um yeah do you know what i mean Dealing with loss, it's, you know, it's, it's trades going against you. Okay, fine. Trades going against me. Okay, fine. I still have the right, I still have the same fundamental view. Fundamentals are all telling me that this is the trade, this is the positions I have, but not necessarily go all in, scale it. You know, um, you might be a scale up seller. Uh, I've got a uh, guy at the moment 
just finished with him. Lovely guy from Holland. Uh, love him to pieces. Good dude. Um, he's short of the Dow. And he, he is wearing Bottom. some pain, right? Wearing some pain. He still, he said to me, no, look. He said, yeah, maybe I went in a little bit too heavy here, but I should be scaling this up. Because then, you know, you'll get that right position. You'll get it sort of at the right value, the right price. Then that market starts to drop. And it's like, right, all these positions that I perhaps added is now coming down, 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 down. Now I'm in the money. Now, maybe I'm in the money that much that that first original trade that I took, which was maybe in a size that wasn't necessarily appropriate for my account, I can actually I close that. So then I have that worry and that's, you know, that's that's gone. Now I'm position trading and now I'm, you know, I've got maybe a, I mean, I, well, I've messaged him, you know, after the CPI figures out the States, you know, a, a quick look at the phone. I just went to the store and a quick look at my phone. I was in the car and I'm like, oh, Dale's down 900 points. So I send him a message. Said, oh, who's a happy chappy today then? And he said, yeah. <laughs> you know. but, but, but the thing is, that move, 80% of that move happened and you have to be in the market because if you had a, if you had a pending order to sweep you into the market, you would have got filled at the bottom and you, wouldn't, and you would have missed that move. Exactly. So it's, you got to be in the market to catch it because if you're not in the market – the moves happen like the moves these days they happen like in in a moment and then if you're lucky you'll catch like the trend 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 but then it moves it retraces moves it retraces so if you got to be in it for the long term so you can catch catch that that actual move otherwise you're just going to try and catch a point here a point there and then and what's the point and then you, you're chasing your tail yeah 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 so i mean it's you know it's having that longer term view is you know, understanding what is going on fund um, you know, and saying to yourself, right, well, look, everything is stacked this way. <coughs> Excuse me. Everything is stacked this way. My mind hasn't changed. The fundamentals haven't changed. Why is the market going against me? If I'm short, why is the market going up? Uh, profit taking? Profit taking rallies? You know, these things happen. If you're short, obviously, you have to buy back in order to realize a profit. So sometimes what you have in markets is they'll be down, 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 and then all of a sudden, bang, you'll have you know a fairly decent sized move to the upside. Now that could very much be a short covering rally. It doesn't mean fundamentally that anything's changed. It just means you have to lock in profit. The profit isn't a profit that you booked it. And so you know, take the profit, right? Fundamentally, nothing's changed. Right, short again. Okay, now let's watch that market go back down. So you can have short covering rallies, you can have long liquidation. You know what I mean? It's, 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 you know, these things happen in markets and they happen quite regularly. It doesn't mean, like I say, that that fundamental has changed. It just means people are realizing profit. And by people, I mean institutions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, yeah, good. And the, the, for the trend to really take off, there's got to be like some big picture news that really happens to, you know, confirm that it's, that yes, we're moving in that direction, and so that's yeah. what takes to the next level. Yeah, yeah, indeed. So, so yeah. Uh, how, how would you recommend? Say, sorry. So say, 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 you say, you say, you say. No, I was just going to say, just you know, if you have a conviction, if you've if you've really lined up things happening fundamentally, if you, you know, you're not trading with your heart, you're trading with your head. Yeah, sometimes you might have to wear a bit of pain. But hey, that's trading. You know, you ain't going to be right all of the bloody time. That's impossible. Um, so sometimes, like I say, right trade, wrong time. But so how do you say where? How do you say where the pain then with risk management and 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 position sizing and, and trade and building up the I, trade? Yeah, I mean that's dependent upon attitude to risk. That's dependent upon size of account. That's de- do you know what I mean? There's lots of factors in there. How much margin you're going to chew up? Is another well, you give us give us the play that you would do. Give us like a scenario that you would look at. Give us how you would enter it. And this is not trading advice. This is just no, the, this in, the mind, the mind of the the mind, inside the mind of how a trader looks at what they would do. But the, let's if we looked at the U.S. stock markets. I mean, you know, they are overvalued. Let's be perfectly honest. You know, the companies out there, it's it's, it's on paper. I mean, one of those things as well with. Um, 
let me pull up the chart. I love this. I love this because, like, okay, so yeah, like, let's say, let's say, you know, the the U.S. markets have gone down a bit this week, and people are saying, I already missed the move. So I like, wouldn't suggest that you've missed the move um, at all. One of the, what I was going to say was, is, is, you know, if you look back during the sort of the COVID period and, you know, interest rates are basically slashed to nothing, you can basically borrow money for jack shit. Let's just say that you're Mr. and Mrs. Smith and you live at 111, you know, Acacia Road, right? Kids have left the house, mortgage has been paid, you've got, you know, no outstanding debts or whatever. And the bank says, hey, look, we'll lend you 250 grand, we'll charge you half a percent. Well, stock market keeps going up yeah sure boom we'll borrow that stick it in the stock market it's like it's just keep going up and up and up and up and up Those markets just don't always go in one direction but you know there's a lot of money involved in the stock market at the moment that have completely inflated values of companies if you really actually sat there and broke it all down you'd go eh, that's looking a bit toppy so you know all the multiples are, rid- are ridiculous they're trading yeah. at way over the way over like the 15 to 17 multiple range. So then if you look at that historically, every time that happens, what happens? Crash. They go back down to fair value. To back, yeah. Back to where the yeah, where it should be. Yeah. So then if you looked at that and you had that particular view and you said, right, okay, well, longer term, this stock market looks to me like it's it's you know, it's gonna go then I'm sure it goes up a bit again. I'm wearing a bit of pain, but hey, look, I'm going to go short. Nothing has changed in here. And it may go off another bit. Boom. I'm in again. But I'm not overexposing myself. Do you know what I mean? I'm not I'm not going all in and I'm you know, going nuts. I'm scaling up. Because then that position, where if I could go all in at one level, I mean, yeah. scaled, you know what I mean? I've yeah. now scaled it. My average price is better, right? Then as that market, like I say, then it starts to drop. I'm just going to just sit there and just go, let it happen. You, you know, one, exactly. One of the, you know, one of the things is, again, I think a lot of people suffer from is micromanagement of trades that they have. They're so keen to, you know, be right up its ass with a, with a stop. It's moved 20 points in my favor. I'm going to move my stop five pips up and this and that. Hey, look. Guilty. You know. Guilty. It, it's, it's if you know if you've got that longer term mindset then you say to yourself right well i don't need to be right up its ass so no markets are going to go up and down do you know what i mean that's just what happens so we will get a retracement and then it will drop again but again get off its ass michael get off its ass michael. Uh, yeah but i mean if you if you looked at um you know, the crash during the COVID crisis, right? It comes, it's just on the Dow as an example. So it comes all the way down and you'll see this big, what people describe as pin bars. I hate labeling candlesticks. It's just bullshit. Um, but if you looked at it, what did it do? It basically came down to the level roughly around the 18,000 mark. Don't get me to say it, you know, to the tick, right? But it <laughs> roughly comes down to there. Now, what was that? That was a previous high going back from quite a few years ago. Now, that market crashed very quickly and then all of a sudden rebounded. What's happening there? Average people on the street. Oh, I'm making money. I'm making money on the way up. Great, great, great. We're going to make you wear some pain now. So then what happens? The institutions start to sell and sell and sell. And Mr. and Mrs. Smith are then sitting there thinking, oh, shit, you know, the value of our, oh, it's go- oh, 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 sell. We've got to get out of this. We've got to get out of this. And of course, what happens? Panic, fear. You know, markets can take months or years to go up, but will drop in days. Fear. Now, who's sitting there going? Mm-hmm. Institutions. Yeah, it's big institutions, right? They'll sit there and they'll go, right, okay, that's enough pain. Boom. Right, now we're into the market. So sometimes this is the thing. If you have that strength of conviction about what you're doing and about the trade that you're in, best thing to do, nothing. Leave it alone. Have a, have you a getting, little, well, you're getting a margin call. Margin call. Well, yeah, you, 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 you. <laughs> yeah. 
you know, if you get a margin call, then let's be honest, you've overexposed yourself, haven't you? Yeah. yeah. Your tra- you know, your trade size is too big. Um, Pissed that one up, man. <sighs> yeah. You know. But, I mean, it's, <laughs> you say, you know, margin calls, going back a few years ago with the um, Swiss National Bank, uh, when they released their peg on the Euro Swiss. I mean, can you imagine that? You're like, hey, Michael. Yeah. Uh, but you've lost, you've lost 10,000 on your trade. We're going to need another 10,000 for margin call to keep it open. FI. I don't know you. Fuck off. Yeah, exactly. Who are you? <laughs> Fuck off. Yeah. Leave me alone. I've already lost 10. I'm not losing 20. Thanks very much. Yeah. You know, so I mean, yeah, that, yeah. Bank, that bankrupted brokers and things, or retail brokers, stuff like that. But, you know, like I say, if you're, if you're trading in a size that makes you feel uncomfortable, why on earth are you doing that to yourself? You know, yes, people want to make money. Yes, we live in a society where everything has to be done yesterday. And, you know, everybody wants to drive a Lamborghini. Yeah, fine. But we all want to be right. We all want to be right. So I, I spoke to like one of the owners of FXCN and he says, we ran uh, surveys on our clients. And he says, as Michael, he's like, he's like, he's like, what is the average, you know, he's like the average trader. He's like 45, 54. They got a few hundred K in the bank. They want to go to the dinner party and they want to, and they want to be the guy who's right yeah. at the dinner party. They want status. Yeah. All right. They want to say, Hey, look at my trading account. I was right on this trade. I made money. Yeah. Everybody wants to be right. You can't be right all the time, you know, and everyone, you, everyone's smarter want- than the market. Well, exactly. If you want to sit there and basically try and dictate to the market what you want it to do, well, it's just going to go, I'll do what I want to do, thanks. Um, well, you know, but being right, that's the thing as well. Ego. I, you can't have an ego. Can't have an ego. Because the market's going to do what it wants to do. And you know, it's a case of... Um, man, talk about, like, talk, like, talk about the feelings of trading before. Like, like Ben, you said like traders experience death with losing when the shit, man, I've never felt lower in my life when I've experienced some big losses. I've never felt lower in my life. Yeah, but like, you've, not been, you've not been taught to deal with it. That's a problem. You've not been taught to deal with it. I mean, I suppose the only sort of type of people out there that really psychologically have that on a regular basis would be. I don't know, athletes and sports teams and things like that. They come in, they have a psychologist and they're like, you know, try to program to just say, look, losing is part of the game. It's part of any game, you know, whether it be football, whether it be soccer, whether it be hockey, whether it be anything. You can't win all the time. So you are going to lose. How do you bounce back from that? How do you know what I mean? So it's... It's going to sound stupid, but you've got to get used to losing because, and I don't mean that as, in, you know, losing a shitload of money. That's not what I mean. But it's the it's having the ability to deal with that emotion and kind of compartmentalize it and go, OK, well, that didn't work. That's OK. Because the next trade that I take that, OK, that could be the one there. That could be the one that really takes off. So, I mean, I, I say to people, look, you know, when you lose, and you will, you know, don't stare at the bottom of a bottle of Jack Daniels. And when you win, don't go fucking popping shank, champagne corks and doing cartwheels around your, around your living room. You know, it's like treat winning and losing is exactly the same. Um, yeah, and for, any, and for anyone who needs the experience with winning and losing, I recommend having a family. You know, I got a wife. I got a wife, and she tells me no all the time. And now I have a kid, and I'm uh, I'm like oh, and I'm like uh, I'm like second fiddle or whatever. But I'm, I'm last place. So it's like yeah, it's good experience humbling humbling the ego over there. It's like it is. Like, but that's 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 the thing. You know, people you can't have an ego when you're trading. You're not in control of the market. This, you know, you're seriously not in control. And like I said, it won't do what you want it to do just because you want it to do that. So you can't always be right. You will be wrong, but get over it. You know. Well, that, that's that, that's why uh, my my tag on uh, on Twitter is Wave Rider because you just got to w- ride the wave. Like whatever it is, you got to ride it one way or another. Yeah. 
you know, and like I say, it's not always one way traffic either. You know, I mean, the, the, the thing for me is if you, uh, you know, if you've just started trading or something like that and you've found, you know, I've got win and I win and I win and I win and I win. As soon as that first loss comes along, you're going to completely fall apart. You don't know how to deal with it. And, yeah. you know, it's, it's, it's yeah, one of those things. I think that it, the quicker you can get used to it, and I know that sounds so strange. The quicker that you can get over losing and dealing with that emotion and putting it to one side and saying that it's okay to lose that's part of the game can't win all the time so stop trying to be right all the time and then sometimes learn that you can even be wrong and still make money yeah. Yeah. well look, what's it called well, speaking of institutions and retail and Taking profit, uh, it's the case of of three of a three trillion dollar market cap for crypto assets becoming a trillion dollars after like a couple of like weeks or months. Two trillion dollars of value evaporates. What happened there? What happened there? Um, maybe people stop believing that cryptos. Are the future, are the thing. Um, I mean, my view on cryptos has always been hey, look, I come from a, you know, markets that are regulated, whether it be FCA, you know, in the UK, whether it be ASIC in, in Australia. I, I come from a, that background. I'll only trade something that's regulated. Now, why would I say that? Well, because I understand, a, I understand how it works, you know, these fundamentals, how, you know, like we've been speaking about, right? They're market movers. Somebody comes out, big owner of a huge electric car company, we won't mention his name, mm. um, but he's in the middle of uh, a lawsuit to buy Twitter. He comes out and he says something on a Twitter account of what happens, crypto market moves. Sorry, but there ain't no fundamentals there. It's, it's, it's markets moved by what somebody said on Twitter. People, I think, have lost a lot of faith with it. You know, you hear of all of the scams that go on as well, you know, exchanges that get hacked and wallets that get hacked and drained. And I don't personally, um, I've never trade them. I have discussed them with people and people that I used to work with and things like that. And, you know, have a good chat with uh, friends uh, back end of last year, early into this. And he's he believes in it. Fine. Fair enough. But I don't. I don't believe in it. And I think a lot of people have lost a little bit of faith with it. Um, sort of starting to see that. Yeah. How on earth do you predict, a, you know, market moves on the basis of what? Somebody, somebody, something that somebody said on Twitter, something like that. Yeah. You know, All blockchain is, is is a glorified database. And every database. Holy shit! Hacked. Yeah, yeah. it's just a better name for a it's just a better name for a database. Blockchain. Yeah. You know, so I mean, for me, it, uh, again, if these things are getting hacked, <laughs> you don't know when that's going to happen. There's no warning. I've seen you know, companies close, I've seen brokerage houses close, people are just draining money out of it. And well, that's, that's what I say, like, so, so, because we talk about people taking profits. So my, my thing is, look at, and you have Bitcoin, boom, 2008, you know, you have the, what's it called, it becomes, you know, popular, and then... 2017 buzzwords start picking up and it goes from like not very much to like 8,000 bucks and then 20k and you know in that span it became very very popular and people said shit we can make money off that through transactions so that's those are the only people that made money off of bitcoin is people who made money off transactions along the way it does not provide anything. It is not a utility. It does nothing. But what it did do, 
somewhere along the way is they got a lot of people to put a lot of money into it. And between 2017 and 2022, you had, you had a, a lot of retail people come in after 2017 because it peaked the interest and you saw people getting rich and they're like, ooh, where's that money? How are they making money? What is that? Is this the future of money? Because people are telling stories and building a lot of hype. And <clears throat> then we have the whole easy money and people are selling hype to, you know, all this new generation of, you know, young guys getting assets and taking over their family wealth and like, yo, let's make money, bro, bro, bro. bro. Yeah. And, you know, so they flooded in and, you know, a rising tide, you know, lifts all boats. So that's how people get, you know, rich at the beginning. Now it's start. Now it gets sophisticated because institutions come in. They throw some money in because hey, if money can be made off there, let's take let's let's do that. So they start throwing money in, making money off transactions, transactions lifted up. Do do do. They know how to they know how to do it. Spreads are huge, with spreads being that big, and you're able to make a percentage with with twenty fifty thousand dollar prices, and you're making one two percent off of like commissions, or you're making even even point. 10% in thousand, uh, thousand times a day. You're laughing. You're laughing because it's gravy. It's gravy. So you're doing, making gravy. We've yeah. been doing it for years. Exactly. So they come in, institutions come in, throw the money at it, and then they rise it up, rise it up. Retail comes in, they say this, oh, let's buy it, buy it as it's going up because retail, as it goes up, they want to be a part, FOMO. And then institutions say, yeah, we had our fun. Let's leave the party. Yeah. Retail wow. saying, what happened to the party? Well, it's the same thing, it, you know, the same thing with gold. You know, you remember when gold broke and closed above 2,000? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right? Yeah. The world yep. and his wife were like, oh, shit, gold through 2,000, this is it. It's going to pump. It's going to go. That's a pump and dump. Like, you know, really? Why? Why is it, it going to take off? And that's the thing. The minute you hear about the average man in the street saying, oh, you've got to buy crypto, you've got to buy gold, get the fuck out. And, you know, it ain't going up, it's going down. You know, as, I, as I've often said to people, sometimes I buy to sell, sometimes I sell to buy. That's how, yeah. banks, tr that's how banks play a game. It is a game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I sell to... That's that's interesting. Yeah, yeah. Because you, 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 you get give it to everybody and then you get it lower. Yeah, of course. Yeah. It's, that's the thing. So if I'm already long, let's just as a prime example, I'm already long a gold. Let's say from seventeen hundred, right? Um, it's going up. It's going up. I'm pushing out all these reports. You know, it's going higher. It's going higher. It's going higher. It's going to burst through two thousand. Right. So when the average person starts to buy gold, let's say through two thousand. All they're doing is they're buying it from me and they're hoping me close my position out, right, from my original long. And now because there's this big furore, <gasps> gold through 2000, we should buy the shit out of it. Yeah, now I'm going short. Thank you very much. So sometimes I sell to buy and sometimes I sell. It's all about positioning yourself in the market by doing the opposite of what you told every other fucker to do. I like how you like say it so quietly. It's like you're like, this is my secret, but like I'm not saying it. <laughs> I didn't even notice I'd done that. <laughs> <laughs> but that's 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 the thing, you know. It's how do you how do you position yourself and get yourself the best price? And you'll also use your customers to do that as well. I'm right. talking institutional level. You'll you'll use your customers to do that because again, you have to think if you're sitting at a bank, who pays your salary and who pays your bonus? It's the bank. It ain't your customers, right? It ain't your clients. So no, you, you, yeah. you, you, they you, help you, me get my numbers. They help me get yeah. the without without my customers, I ain't getting my numbers. But you can screw you screw them over as well. Uh, you know, so if you send a report, you know, like, again, this is the this is the thing, and 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 how you know how banks work. Um, if I want to go short the euro. What do I tell everyone else to do? Buy it. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's bank reports. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, bank reports. That's, uh, for years, Cause, yeah. Because the other Henry, great Henry Blodgett. Henry Blodgett. Yeah, because the other great little thing is as well, if you actually read these reports that get sent out, 
it will say small writing. We, we have positions in this list. Right? It will say we have not necessarily used this advice for our own trading or words to the effect, you know. Yeah. So you look at it and then you say, well, how much credence is there actually in these reports that are getting sent out? Not a lot. But if I can get you to do something to help me make money, but you don't even know that you're doing it, happy days. I make well, money for the bank. Bank pays me. Happy days. Well, let's let's you know. There's been some fresh news uh, with uh, we have a new king, and you know, yeah, you know, the queen. So what what, is, what does that mean? You know, for someone who's not, who doesn't know much about the kingdom. Or, or whatnot. We're just, you know, proper. I'm just, you know, in the Commonwealth over here. Yeah, well, the, the country's sort of still in shock for, for, well, I'd say the majority of the of, of, of the population of the country. Uh, the Queen was the only sort of monarch that we know. So it's, it's it's strange. It feels weird that she's not going to be there, but life goes on, you know. Life does the monarch up. does the there's monarch a, have a, a uh, have a place to play inside the side afterwards? Like it feels like, like you said, it feels like she was the what it represented, and like it's, yeah, what is it afterwards? Yeah, what does it? Yeah, exactly. What is it afterwards? I don't think any of us know um, at this moment what type of king he's going to be and what's going to happen. You like to think that he would uh, take the reins so to speak, and just, you know, just continue on in the same vein. Will he try to modernise things? Don't think so. I think he'll he'll do his time. I think if, if anybody's going to sort of modernise things, it'll be William and Kate. Yeah, it's a sad time, you know, but these things happen. These things happen and you just got to get on and deal with it. And again, it's like we were talking about loss earlier. This is loss for a nation. Um, yeah. And we have to deal with it, you know, and get over it. And uh, yeah, it's just, like I say, it's just, it's just weird. You know, you're going to pull your, you know, your, your bank notes out and you, for your whole life, it's just been the same, same picture, essentially, same person. That's yeah. going to change. Yeah. Stamps are going to change. It's like that. You've got to get used to singing God Save the King instead of God Save the Queen. And it's, you know, it's just, it's a period of adjustment. But, um, yeah, like markets, ever changing. Yeah, well, I've seen probably at least two or three, at least, I think, three, at least three different versions of the $20 bill, the queen on it, hmm. over here, over time. So, yeah. Yeah. So yeah. what, does it, what does it what does it mean for you guys? It's more interesting. What does it mean for, for us? What does it mean abroad? You know, head of state, obviously, based in Canada, right? So, head of state. I mean, well, it means something it? totally different over here. Like for uh, like, I'm I, I think like uh, it's like a for Canada, like it's uh, it's interesting because we had a we had a federal a holiday of mourning declared, but then. The province said, "No, we'll just have one minute of mourning uh, for it. We'll do, we're, you're not going to have a day off. You're just going to have one minute to stand and observe it, a, a moment of silence." So um, it's interesting because, like, the, the federally they want to, you know, recognize it, and then provincially they're kind of saying they're minimalizing it. They're saying, "Yeah, thank you, but mm, bottling it up." And, you know, seeing you, seeing how you talk about it, you're, you're patriotic, like, it means a lot to you. And for, for me, um, I see it as, like, it, it changes something. But I definitely know it would mean something to my parents because I remember being a kid and watching in their bedroom when um, prin when uh, Princess Diana had the car crash and everyone was like... <gasps> But like I feel that moment was a lot more like significant than this moment was. Like, yeah, I think well, there was there there's an air of inevitability with the queen. You know, she wasn't getting it. Yeah, you knew it was happening. You know, 
Yeah. So. But just, but the sadness for Diana versus like the sadness that people are feeling now. I'll tell you, like the like we everybody here, like like there's a big sadness for Diana, and that but that was a long time ago. That was 30 years ago. A lot happened. The world, the world is like, but but it's funny because like the world was like a smaller place back then, but it felt a lot closer together, and now the world is a lot more connected, but it feels further apart than ever. Yeah, because now everybody can voice and share their opinion across any sort of social media platform, stuff like that. Like, there's a great tweet. Um, I'm into motor racing a lot. One of the guys. Um, Basically, just and he, he put a tweet up and he said, well, whatever your view today, don't be a dick. You know, it's like whatever your view is, it's just, you know, if you're ecstatic that the Queen's died, don't put it up for other people. You know, or if you're, it's because it just creates division. I think that's yeah. what a lot of social media has done. It, it divides people rather than brings them together. That's what we're going through right now is they're trying to erase the history and like that, that I think that's the reason why uh, there's there's that mixed reaction all over the place outside of the UK is because they're they're having that big place where they're trying to like take a, a dump on history and yeah. and trying to do things like that. I, I you know I tell you what I'd say there'd probably be more people in Canada you know sort of upset that the Queen's passed than sudden Justin Trudeau. Yeah, no everyone. Everyone is, uh, it's kind of like, uh, it's been a quiet week all around. Like, it, 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 like everywhere, like the whole world has definitely felt like a little bit quieter this week. So uh, I'll, I'll give it that. Yeah, it's been solemn. But, you know, life goes on and that is a human experience, isn't it? Life goes on and you have to deal with, deal with things as, uh, as they come along. And yeah, that, that, yeah. And so... I th- that might be an interesting thing to see is how, like, how the G7 plays out in the future, if that's going to be a story, because you have the the BRICS emerging as a powerhouse moving forward as well. So, yeah, it's yeah, we'll see, we'll see. But I mean, that's the thing, isn't it? Things change, shit happens as the as the saying goes, and you just got to deal with it as it comes along, and that's. Just to bring it back round to trading, just to bring it, you know, things happen. Adapt. You have to. You're not in yeah. control. Never yeah. have been, yeah. never will be. So. Yeah. Well, in, in honor of keeping things on time, we we got to we got to twelve thirty. I don't think we covered any of the questions we had. We just had a lot of fun talking about. <laughs> yeah. What's it I, called? I wrote, I wrote a shitload of things down, and we didn't speak about any of them, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> for another time yeah exactly we'll save that for another time and we'll we'll, we'll make sure that we definitely go through them all right awesome a- a- any uh can you tell everyone how they can get in touch with you how they can find out more about you uh sure yeah um so i do run sort of like a, a mentoring program uh on a one-to-one basis i, I truly believe uh, if you're going to teach somebody do it one-to-one uh, i do run a website it's paul scott fx.com nothing flash title in the top left hand corner is trading without all the bullshit um email is paul at scott fx.com um i think what i've said is a lot of old shit today fine fair enough don't care uh if you like it get in contact um not everybody's cup of tea because I basically just tell it how it is um so yeah that's it really you know not here to sell a course not here to sell anything really i just like chatting with you know like-minded people and um michael's been very gracious to have me on today and it's 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 been fun thanks very much awesome well i appreciate it paul everyone you you know how to get in touch thank you so much and uh, we gotta do this again soon yeah have a great have a great evening over there take care and you buddy take care good afternoon Thank thank you